What is the sound of a meteor? Well, I think it's the sound of something coming at you, and then it hits you. So you might say, isn't that kind of a niche sound? How often would you use something like that? And I would say, well, never say never. You never know when something like that might come in hand. But you don't need to use Meteor just for riser effects and impact sounds. You could use it just for one or the other. And that's why Meteor can become a one-stop shop for all your transitional sounds and kaboom sounds. Just take a look at the presets menu. And Meteor has a unique feature. You can time the length of the sound effects by seconds or by beats. And beats is useful if you're using sound effects like risers for music. It's a really great feature, but it's not one that I personally use because I found something I like better. Let me show you. I've just used MIDI Learn to map these three faders so that they're all controlled by the module. I don't have to mess about with setting different timings. As I'm triggering the sounds on my keyboard, I can make my sounds higher or lower depending on where I play them on the keyboard. And if I play chords, I can fatten them up. All in real time, in the moment, in the same intuitive way I play any instrument. Now I'd like to add panning to the three faders. You can see here how I can do this by right clicking and moving my mod wheel. So now the sweep works just like it does in real life. The volume reaches its peak just as the object rushes past me from left to right. If I want to, I can map more parameters to the mod wheel, like distortion. I could also map either low pass or high pass filter to the mod wheel, or reverb or delay. You can map these parameters to as many different controllers as you want. But as this is about creating the impression of a directional movement, either rising, falling, approaching, or passing, I personally like to have all the changes happen at once and I find triggering the sound with my right hand and modulating them with my left to be the best way. But remember, whenever you find a setting that you like, make sure you save a preset. More about presets later. Now that we've set up our MIDI mappings, let's check out some of the sound sources available to us in Meteor. The easiest way is to randomize them. Every time you push this button, you get three new sound sources. If you stay on the settings page, then every time you change the sounds, the MIDI learn settings don't change. So this is a good way to quickly create a whole slew of presets of different sounds map to your controllers the way that you like. In addition to randomizing, it's good to spend at least a little time exploring the folders to see what kind of sound elements are in them. The noise folder is a good place to make different kinds of whoosh sounds. You may know white noise and pink noise, but Meteor offers a whole coloring book full of noises. I've found the darker colors tend to favor lower parts of the spectrum. As you can see, they've included a lot of orchestral and reverse sounds. I'd particularly like the rolls folder. You can make a rising sound out of a snare roll. The synth sounds are strong, which is no surprise seeing how they come from UVI's Falcon. I'm a particular fan of the textures folder as it has everything from up and down shepherd tones to all kinds of foley. The 
impact section has four faders instead of three and has different sounds. The effects are different too, but it works in the same way as the risers do. If you start MIDI mapping the impact faders at the same time as the riser ones, things really start to get nuts. First, while you can't map the pitch on the riser side, you can on the impact side. And the impact has the amazing ear cam granular feature that you may find in a lot of UVI instruments. Control that with a mod wheel and you will get some really unexpected and insane sound. Let's go to the main page again by clicking this button. There are around 700 presets that come with Meteor, and they are awesome. For most people, that may be all they need. These are 700 presets that you can change the timing on to suit the needs of your videos and music. UVI kindly offers a best of folder called Meteor Highlights. So let's audition some of the sounds there. You can use the Meteor presets exactly as they are, or you can turn off the risers or turn off the impacts. But, and this is important, unlike working in the settings page, every time you change your preset here on the main page, you'll lose all the MIDI mappings that you've done on the settings page. But the presets are one of the best ways to see what Meteor is capable of. Here's where you save your presets to your hard drive and load them later. Unfortunately, every time you want to load one of your user presets, you have to navigate to the folder you saved it in. Not the fastest way to try out a lot of your user presets. It would be great if you could look in this menu and there would be a user presets folder there, but I haven't found a way to do that. However, if you happen to have Falcon, there's a better way. Instead of saving presets, save Falcon Multis. And then when I load a single multi, I have access to all the other multis that I saved in that folder right here. I can click the right and left arrows and try them out. I think I've shown you why I always turn to Meteor whenever I need a transitional effect. And I often find my favorite impact sounds on there too. Now there are zillions of other features to the program that I didn't get into in this video, but there are other videos that do that very well, and I put links to them below. Thanks for listening. This is Tiger the Frog.